Hi there, it's Darren here from War Cradle Studios and welcome to the first in our series of videos on how to paint our awesome December miniature Krampus. In the first video we're going to be focusing on Krampus's robes, so we're going to be going through how to base coat those, um, how to add depth and volume with shading and glazing, then we're going to be looking at highlighting those robes and then unifying them all together. Right, so let's start painting our awesome Krampus Christmas model. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get a good base coat down. Now I tend to work on the majority area of the model. Now with this guy, it's pretty easy to see what that's gonna be. So we're looking at base coating the robes. Uh, the overall sort of effect that we wanna get with Krampus and the effect that I got with the studio model is nice and grim and dark and, and evil looking. So to get a good red, we're actually gonna start a little bit lower than maybe we would normally. So. For this, I'm going to go for Sanguine Base, it's a nice deep red, and for the base coat, I'm going to be watering this down quite a lot. So one of the things I like doing is putting lots of layers on to get nice smooth transitions between colours, tones, shades and so on. So I'm going to be watering this paint down about, about two to one. So at the moment, that's about one to one. Now we're looking at about two to one. Now I'm using a wet palette. Um, the reason I'm using a wet palette is because this is such a big model. Um, I don't want my paint drying between stages. So using a wet palette keeps your paint moist and means you can keep working away with the tones rather than having to keep remixing and trying to get that exact same color again. So that looks about right. So applying this, I'm not going to worry too much about the detail. Um, if we go over that with the red, that's not an issue because we're always going to come back later on with other colors and tidy that up. So when we're base coating, this is going to be very thin. So we're going to see the black come through. So to make sure we've got a good solid base coat down, I'll be repeating this process two, maybe three times. Now I tend to keep my brush strokes all going in the same direction. Uh, that way, all your strokes are nice and tidy, you don't get patchy results. I'm using quite a big brush for this as well. Um, I think this is a, a one. So I can get this done as quick as possible. So as he is a big model, we don't want to be sitting there with a small brush because it will take all day. Throughout these videos, I'll be using P3 paints and Windsor and Newton brushes. And make sure you follow this right to the end where you can find out about our awesome tie-in competition. Okay, so for the next stage, what I've done is I've taken some Scorn Red and I've watered that down, usual about two to one. Stuck that on my, on my wet palette and I'll mix that in with a little bit of the Sanguine base from our base coat. What that'll do is it'll allow us to blend some of those transitions in through the recesses and highlights and so on. So, load in the brush up, don't want too much on there, and just start applying this onto the most raised areas. Now, because it's thin, none of this is gonna build up. And one of the other things that we can do so when you get to an area, for example, this bit here, that's got really deep recess, what we can do is a technique that I call feathering. So some people call it wet blending, two brush blending or whatever. I tend to do it with one brush, but all you need to do is just dampen your brush, take the paint off, dampen the brush, and then just fade out the edge of the color into the recess with kind of like a a backwards and forwards motion, almost like you're shading with a pencil. And that starts building those shades as we're highlighting. So it kind of doing two things at once. Now I'm not expecting this to give us a solid coat straight away. Um, this one will probably take two passes again, maybe three. But once again, that does come down to how bright or, or how how much contrast you want on your model. So for the studio version I painted, this was repeated, uh, if I remember rightly, three times. I'm just gonna brush away from the dark areas. And on 
onto the raised. Same again, don't worry too much if you get this um, stage on any of the other areas of the model, because as we go through, we'll be adding more color. And I use a technique called dressing the model. So you start with the majority color or the color that's in the background. And once you've got that laid down, each color that you put over the top tidies up the last. So when you're doing the final pieces, your model should come together. Okay, so we've got our first pass done. So it's come out pretty solid. I've stayed away from the real deep recesses. And to be fair, you could, you could probably stop this right now and you'd get a really kind of disheveled, dirty look to the rags. But uh, I want him to look a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna go for uh, a second pass. Exactly the same mix as before. And I'm gonna be doing the same thing. So feathering that out where it meets the shadow areas. Now, some of you may have noticed that my brush, it is, it's a little bit ill cared for, but uh, we're, we're good friends, me and this brush. It's, it's like a good pen. So uh, yeah, there's no brush cruelty gone on here. It just needs a bit of a clean. Okay, so that's the second pass with our sanguine base and scorn red mix. So second pass has settled really, really well. Um, we've started to build up some shadow areas and we've started to uh, build our highlights for the next stages. Um, one thing I tend to do when I'm highlighting is I will increase the level of highlights as I move up the model. So the next stage I'm going to start applying from about here rather than right from the bottom. One of the things that does is as you get each highlight stage done it, it kind of pulls the, the viewer's eye up the model to the bits that you want them to look at like the face and uh, any sort of detail like that. So with two passes, we're ready to move on. So for the next stage, we're gonna carry on building the highlights on the red, but we're gonna get a little bit more detailed now. So for this stage, I'm gonna be going on with Kador Red Base, which is a very strong red, very strong indeed. Um, so I'm gonna take a couple of blobs of this, stick it on the wet palette, and Going to water down about two to one as before and just bring a little bit of the scorn red in from the previous coat just to help with those transition transitions again and i'm using a slightly thinner brush um this one is still a size one but i've trimmed it down a little bit once again it's another one of my old comfy brushes so what i'm going to be doing here is aiming for the raised areas. I'm not gonna be putting this in any of the recesses and I'll be feathering out the edges as before. You see that is a very, very strong red we've got there. And then as that's been placed, just gonna take the paint off my brush, make it a little bit damp. I'm just going to feather those edges down. I'll push up into the paint and then pull back down side to side motion like sketching with pencils again and that just spreads that pigment out. Now once again depending on how bright you want your model to be at the end you can repeat this process as many times you like to solidify the colors. So I'm gonna be making one solid pass over the whole model, build all the highlights in one go, and then I will go back over some areas that I feel need a little bit more saturation or a little bit more intensity. And because the paint's so thin, the blends are gonna be really easy. Same again, I'm just gonna Put some of that paint there. Get rid of the excess on the brush. And just feather that down. And with fabric, fabric has a lot of textures. So it's okay to vary your feathering method. Sometimes you can do the side to side kind of sketchy motion to blend that in. Uh, sometimes you can go for like a circular motion and uh, that will start to build that, um, that kind of fabric texture. Same as before, don't worry about getting the paint 
on any of the other areas because we're going to be tidying that up as we go along. As you can see, we've got a lovely strong colour there, nice deep tones in the recesses. Okay, so now we've got most of the red work done. Uh, there's a few little bits of highlighting and stuff that we're going to do later on. But most important thing now is now we've built that red up, we want to start adding some depth to the recesses, to the folds of the cloak and so on, and start bringing this very bright red down a touch. So this is going to be the start of the shading process. And to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is grab some coal black. And I'm going to make a glaze out of this. So a glaze is a very, very, very thin, very watered down paint. We can do it with inks, but basically it's incredibly thin. So what this is gonna do is it's going to lay in the recesses and over a few passes, it's just gonna build up the shadows and the intensity of the shadows. One of the key things with a glaze is not to let it pull up though. This is not a wash. So, Watered down about 10 to 1. Grab a small amount of glaze on the brush and I'm going to start from the bottom of the, mo uh, bottom of the model and work up. So what I'm going to do here is aim for some of these overhanging uh, parts of the rope. So we've got a nice area there. Just going to paint a very thin layer. Not going to let it pull up. And then take off the excess. And just feather out those edges as we've been doing all the way through. And with one watered down pass, one very quick pass, we've added a lot of depth to that fold there. And the same goes for this one under here. It's where the light wouldn't reach. Just going to pop that glaze in. Get rid of the excess. Just feather that edge out. Now, if you slip with the glaze and you get it somewhere you don't want it to go, don't worry because it's so thin. If you just dampen your brush, Go like that over the top of it, I'll just lift it off. No problems whatsoever. And another thing you can do with this glaze is aim it around any detail that sits over the top of the robes, like these severed limbs and so on. And that will start to build up natural shadows underneath them. And once again, don't worry about getting it onto other areas of the model because we're going to come back and clean that up later on. Okay, so with that stage finished, you should really start to see uh, an exaggeration between the light areas and the dark areas that we just applied with the coal black glaze. One of the ways that you can check to make sure your placement's good and that you've got the right level of contrast is to have a look at the model directly from above. So all you should see from that angle really is the bright red. And then if you have a look, the model from below you should see where you start to glaze in those shadows and using that technique always helps keep your placement right now depending on how dark or light you want the model you can repeat this process as many times as you like so I'm going to give this one more pass and then we're done okay so now we've added some shades um, using that glaze what I'm going to do next is start building the highlights in so I'm going to take the basic Kador red that we were using before and I'm going to add a spot of rucksack tan to that one. Now the mix I'm going to go for is about two parts Kador red to one part rucksack tan. And what that will do is it will give us a kind of muted pink. Now don't worry about that because as we go through our stages we're going to change that pink to a, like a, a really nice glowing red. But for the moment, what we're going to do with this is we're going to water it down about two to one. And then we're going to apply this to the raised areas. Now I've changed brush for this one. So I'm still using my Windsor and Newtons, but I've moved to a three, um, three round. And what that does is it gives me a lovely reservoir for holding the paint. So I don't have to keep filling my brush up. And it gives me a lovely fine point for this one. So just on the raised edges there, pull that highlight along. 
and I'm just going to dampen the brush and feather out that edge. So once again, just separating that pigment, pulling it out across the raised edge and giving us a smooth blend. Now, if you've got any sort of snags or holes in the robes, you can go around the edges of that with your highlight color as well. And that just accentuates those deeper parts. And uh, remember that golden rule I was taught, which was light next to dark. So where you've got a deep shadow, you can really make that pop and set that off by putting a highlight right next to it. Good example would be here. So I'm just going to build that highlight right next to that shadow. We get a lovely jump in contrast there. Same as before, I'm just going to feather that out with a damp brush. Once again, P3 paints absolutely love this technique. The pigment separates really easily. You get a lovely blend. So I'm using that sketching motion again there. To just fuzz out that edge. As before, if you get your highlight color on any other areas, it doesn't matter because we're going to tidy that up later in the process. And that's starting to really pop now. I've got some on the shadow area there. That's not a problem. Just damp the brush. And spread that out. Really easy to correct mistakes. Now on these really thin areas, a good, good trick you can use is to rather than using the tip of your brush to highlight, so when you've got a sharp raised edge like that, just use the side of your brush using the side of the brush gives you a lovely sort of minimum point of contact and it gives you a really sharp highlight which is one of the techniques I'll be using a lot later on when we hit up the metallics same again there the side of the brush all the way down and then we just feather that highlight out there same again edge of the brush and then feather that out Now, as we come up to the top of the arms, there's going to be a really big broad area where light's going to settle. So rather than painting on kind of like stripes of highlights, I'm going to use the side to side motion of the brush to give me a nice flat highlight up there. Just feathering out that edge again. looking great. Okay, so now the highlights are done, I'm going to add a little bit more contrast by going back to our shades. So I'm going to make a glaze of Tamar Black, and then we're going to apply that into the very deepest recesses. So same as always, watering that down, around about 10 to 1 for a glaze. And all this stage is for is just to really sharpen up those shadow areas and using that rule of light next to dark i'm going to pop this right next to the highlights because as you can see that gives us real sharp contrast there so only into the purest shadow areas and as before just damp the brush to spread that out so almost aiming for where the material has like a an overhang. During this stage you can actually begin the lining process so if you need any areas that need separating from the rest of the model like these chains and these bits of limbs and stuff you can start outlining them with the black as well. But try not to let it pull up. Okay, so we've got our shadows in place, we've got our highlights in place, so we're ready for the next stage. Um, I'm quite an expressive painter, so I tend to sketch my colours on, I tend to push my highlights right up and I bring my shadows right down. Um, what that can do is it can make the miniature look a bit stark. So when you're about three or four foot away, it will look amazing, but when you get closer to it, actually you can start to see the different areas of shadow and light. So one of the ways of bringing that all together 
um, the next two stages is I'm going to be using glazes just to tie our highlights and shadows and mid-tones and base coats all together into one glorious whole. So what I'm going to do is go back to Sanguine Base, what we used for our initial base coat. Make a glaze out of that. It's about 10 to 1. And this is really just to tone the colours. So once again, we don't want this pulling up in any recesses. We just want a very thin layer over the top of the whole model. Just have a quick test. Yeah, that's good. Now I've gone back to my old faithful fuzzy brush. Uh, bigger brushes are better for this, because you tend to get less streaks. So we're just looking to give a coat of sanguine base over the whole model. Just don't let that pull up, because we're not trying to shade. As you can see on the knee there, just popping this over the top really brings those different colours together. The same down here, if I just put that there, that knocks that red back just a touch and fades it into the shadowed areas beautifully. And that's a very, very, very quick process. So it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes. Same again, if we have a look at that bit there. So we've got quite a jump from highlight to shade there. Just put that glaze over the top. That brings that all together. So now we've put that glaze on, the colours are starting to come together. So for this next stage, I'm going to go for another glaze. This time, what I want to do is just try and bring that red down a touch to more of that um, kind of dried blood colour. So for that, we're going to go on with a glaze of Murderous Magenta. That's quite a shocking colour. That's a kind of bright purple. But as we make a glaze out of that, the red will shine through it and it'll add uh, kind of like a deeper tone to the red. And once more, it's another step towards unifying our highlights and our shades. So watering down 10 to 1. Test that out. That's great. Now this goes on, same again, over the whole model. And same again, don't let it pull up. Once again, using that kind of knee as an example there. You can see that glaze go on. That just changes that tone. Lovely. Okay, so now we've brought those uh, shadows and highlights together. Some of them, some of our highlights might have doled down just a little touch. So I'm just going to go in with a, a final highlight, and that's going to be of the Cadle Red and Rucksack Tan mix that we used earlier. This time I'm just going to be using that to pick out the real pure edges. So we're looking for sharp edges. So a good example would be once again this knee, where I'm just going to bring that highlight in right on the very edge, just to make that stand out. Now it's a quick stage, but placement's everything. So take your time, have a look at the model from above and from below to make sure you're catching your highlights right. And not so much on the feathering this time, this is more kind of precise application. But as always, if you make mistakes, just open your brush and you can pull those pigments out and stretch them across the highlight area. So another good example would be these big sharp creases there. So I'm just going to use the side of the brush again, just run that highlight colour across that. Just brings that out. Same again if you've got any damaged areas, 
a bit of an edge highlight around there. Just makes that stand out a little bit more. Now, depending what you're doing this for, whether it's for gaming or display, you can repeat this process backwards and forwards as many times as you like, and that's the glazing, the highlighting, the shading, until you're satisfied with the results. So now we're on to the final stage of the model. Now we've done our highlights, we're just gonna bring the whole thing back together with a glaze of Kador Red Base. So each stage is really just adding depth and volume to the previous one and keeping everything smooth. And by doing this, you add a real depth and a richness to your colors. Usual rules apply, water it down about 10 to one. Don't let it pull up on the model. So once again, if I show you on the knee, get a real glow. And just spread that out across all of the areas you want red. And then we're going to be done with this stage. So what I'm going to do, just so you can see everything clearly, is when I finish this, I'm just going to black out all of the other areas of the model that are going to be different colours and you'll be able to see the red in all of its glory. <laughs> 